second board is up. That means racing is going to be happening here pretty quickly. Dead center of the screen, the number four, Ricky Carmichael. Most, if not all, the eyes are focused on him, and he typically gets such great starts. He launches out through the middle of the pack again and takes the whole shot. First man into turn number one is the number four. Carmichael gets the race oh. next whole shot award. But he goes down. Oh, man. And look out. This is the freeway in rush hour. And with all the respect everybody has, they don't want to run over Ricky. But now it's going to be Chad Reed who's the leader on his Yamaha. I'll tell you, he's the loneliest man in the world laying there in the middle of the track with 39 guys coming at him. And uh, that is not a good feeling. He did have the bike between himself and the rest of the pack. That's a little bit more comforting. But he's got a lot of work to do now. So now it is Chad Reed out in front with Robbie Raynard out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma on his Honda CRF 450. Here's Ricky Carmichael. We're used to seeing him out front by a margin of this the magnitude, but now he's going to be chasing the tail end of the field, of course, making a lot of passes, and that puts himself at risk. Take another look at what happened here. We saw him get the whole shot. Then why did he crash? Well, the dirt's a little bit wet. They've had some drizzle on and off here all morning, and you can just see the front end just goes out from under him, catches a bump, pops him back over, and, and that's it. You're not saving that one. Couldn't quite use Chad Reed for enough of a burn. Chad dodged a bullet there. Robbie Reynard on the number 17 Honda out in front. Here comes Reed with Bubba Stewart. James on the number 7 Kawasaki coming inside. Can't make the pass there. In fact, stalled it. Wow, we're seeing all kinds of strange things going on here among the best riders in the world. Well, this is Chad Reed's race to lose now. I mean, that uh, having these guys that far back, there's no reason he can't just check out. This is his race to win. And trying to get these Kawasaki KX 450s or any of those big four-strokes started again is not as easy as it used to be with the old two-stroke machines in spite of all the manufacturer's efforts to make them a little bit easier to refire. So here comes James Stewart now trying to make his way through traffic. And, of course, the question at this point is where's Ricky Carmichael? He's got to be threading his way about halfway up through the field at this point. Yeah, he's uh, tearing, tearing tear offs like a crazy man and working his way up. There you see him. He's right up to the back of Stewart. Uh, those two are going to connect here soon, I'm sure, and, and uh, work their way to the front of the pack. Used to back see to Ricky Carmichael on the number four, following James Stewart. Different line right there. A little bit different drive off the corner and up the hill. Stewart with one foot, then both off the pegs. And he uh, punches the number 144 Partridge kind of out of the way and goes on by. Let's see if Kyle Partridge hangs on, whether Ricky Carmichael gets a clean line around him. Well, it's got to almost make your head spin when those two come by you. You know, one guy bumps into you, blows you out of a line. The next guy spins you around in a circle. I uh, wouldn't want to be Kyle Partridge right now. Well, he's hanging in there pretty well as uh, both Stewart and Carmichael go past. They're working up behind Robbie Reynard now on the number 17, our early leader. Nick weighs in there as well, top finishing privateer in the Supercross Series. Nick's had a great year with the MDK team, and uh, he's looking to continue that relationship and, 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 and you know, continue to grow that team. And, and they've been great. They've done a lot of good things this year. And the Nationals, Nick's uh, always been comfortable, loves the outdoors and the mud. And uh, it'll be good to see him uh, just keep the good results up this summer. Nick Way on the number 27 machine. He's out of Michigan, also riding a Honda. There goes Stewart. There goes Carmichael, both around Nick Way. So they seem to be like the tide. You know, they're, they're coming. They're heading up towards the front. As we take another look at our Toyota leaderboard, it's changing is Chad Reed on the number 22 bike, but we are watching with more than a little interest now, a battle that's developing behind him as David Billiman is coming into the clutches of both James Bubba Stewart and Ricky Carmichael. So we're seeing three of the biggest names in motocross, but they're not the leaders. Looks like Billiman sort of took a glance over, got out of the way a little bit. I don't know if that's uh, being courteous or just... Uh, Afraid? Realizing he can't run the, the pace there. Those guys are going so fast. You see James get a little crooked. And Ricky diving to the inside to take advantage of it. James looking around at Ricky Carmichael. They both came by David Villeman like he was a lapper almost. Villeman pulled over a little bit, looked at both of them. Now they're looking at each other. And they've got a real man-to-man -man battle going here between the green Kawasaki number seven and the yellow Suzuki number four. You got to realize here too, David Villeman is not slow. And he's a very, very fast rider. One of the top five riders in the world. And these two go around him and just absolutely check out. The pace these two have going right now is so ridiculous. Uh, it, it's just, it's almost impossible that they can go this fast. So James Stewart in front right now with Ricky Carmichael right behind him. We would expect this to be a battle for the lead, but instead it is, uh, they have come up through the pack. Carmichael from dead last. James Stewart from just a spot or two in front of him. They both made mistakes. Carmichael early, Stewart a little bit later. And now they're trying to make up for the mistake that they made. Heading towards the front, they'll never get to Chad Reed. We'll never say never, I would say. 
Yeah, you know, this is this is critical for Ricky. You can tell he is he's trying frantically to get around James. And here it looks like yeah, he's trying to the inside. He's doing everything he can. His goggles, he's got to be down to his last few tear-offs. He's eating that roost, uh, you know, being so close to James, and that does not feel good. I mean, that's that's flying off their rear tires so fast. It's muddy, it's sticking to him. And he wants to try to get by as quick as he can and get in front of him. Like being in the line of fire at a machine gun nest because the dirt clods coming off of there, little rocks and everything else. Here's James Stewart throwing some roost up on the crowd now, and uh, Ricky Carmichael getting a little bit of it, reached up there and wiped off his goggles. If he's out of tear-offs, he's going to have to use his glove. Deep ruts, look at that, all the way up to the engine cases. Here's Chad Reed getting more than a little encouragement from the crowd out in front right now. He should be able to hold those two off with a good, consistent ride. One, well, I would have to say a big mistake, and they'd be on it. Yeah, he's got a pretty huge lead right now. Um, it's looking good for him. You know, he needs the Ricky and James lap times, also on Chad's lap times, letting them know the difference, uh, letting them know his lead. It's probably shrinking a little bit. And uh, he'll be doing the math in his head. Okay, I've got 15 minutes left in the moto or whatever. They're catching me two seconds a lap. You know, the pace I have is good, or I've got to pick up the pace. Uh, so believe me, they're all over there like a bunch of calculators working it out right now. A few spots on the track. They might even be able to get a glimpse of one another here and there with all the elevation changes. It would have to be on high ground. Chad Reed climbing one of the big hills here at Hangtown. And there is the gap between him and Ricky Carmichael. It is significant but not so bad because the laps are winding down. And you can see Chad, when he came down that hill, he can peek straight over and see where those guys are at. So he'll be able to spot them every lap and say, all right, they're catching me this much per lap. So uh, that's an advantage he's got. And those guys, again, Ricky's in the worst position here because he's, he's going to lose his vision. I mean, this is, uh, you can't eat roost for 40 minutes and, uh, and still have clear vision. It just doesn't happen. He's trying to stay on a different line to minimize the effect. Every once in a while, he'll show Stewart a wheel. Now and then, there's a long side. Carmichael makes the move. Can he make it stick? He goes around and with a great acceleration, indeed, takes the position from James Stewart. And now it's payback time with the dirt coming off the back of the four Suzuki. It's Stewart that's going to have to pick his lines. You see Ricky take one little wipe at his goggles there, you know, thinking, all right, good, I'm in front of him. Now I can clean my goggles off and charge and try to catch Chad. That's what he needed to do. He had to get in front of him quick. James Stewart will try to fight back. Had a little bit of a thought there to come on the inside. He pulls up alongside again on a very different line. But Carmichael with the inside rut is going to hold on to the advantage right now. This is for second place, amazingly enough, from dead last to runner up in one moto. James goes inside, Here tries to get a pass back. The crowd lights up. Stewart's wheels are slightly ahead of those of Carmichael there, and now he has made the pass stick with laps, uh, with time winding down and just a few more turns to go here. These guys have been battling in the middle of the pack, now at the front of the pack, and now for the runner-up position, the final two spots on the podium. Carmichael getting wild, comes by, but only briefly. Well, this is what everyone came to Hangtown to see, these two guys going at it. They're going to do this all season long, back and forth. It is great racing, and long gone are the days of total domination. First by Jeremy McGrath. Well, we could go back further than that. Carmichael himself dominating the sport for quite some time. But in the last uh, Supercross season, and now in motocross, it is really going to be the fans that come out the winners, no matter who crosses the line first. The drizzle continues to come down here. You know, everyone in the crowd has umbrellas. And this track's going to continue to get slimier and slick as the rain continues right now. You know, that is the, the worst thing you can do is take your goggles off. It's almost like a, a cardinal rule you, you don't do. But sometimes when it's cooler like this, there's humidity in the air, your body starts to heat up, you'll fog the inside of your goggles, and there's nothing you can do. You just can't see out of them. Or you lose your tear-offs like Ricky did. He had to come through 39 guys. Uh, he just ran out of tear-offs. And eventually they get so dirty you can't see out of them. So it is definitely a last resort. But... Uh, Last lap, look at this, and it, it is James Stewart right behind, getting into a little bit of traffic right now. Who would have thought that Stewart or Carmichael would catch Reed with that big of a lead? It's happened. These guys are incredible. This is the same move he put on Ricky right here. Up inside, makes it work. Reed tries to cross back behind the wheels, but can't do it. They're in the air together, but James Stewart has made the pass, and you get the feeling that since he caught him, he'll probably miss. 
with James Stewart mounting the podium here, having won moto number one in spectacular style. Uh, sort of chronicle the main players in this one. Watch for the four, the seven, and the 22. They are typically the fast starters. There is Villeman on the left side of the racetrack. Out front goes James Bubba Stewart on his Kawasaki number seven. Along with him, number 27, Nick Way with a good start. But Stewart's out in front. That spells trouble for everybody else. Carmichael's moved into second. Stewart with a problem. Stalls the bike almost anyway, and Carmichael gets by. Yeah, Stewart just hit a little bit of mud in that second turn there. The front end pushed and pulled him out of his line, so he's back into third. There is Chad Reed on the number 22 bike. Stewart, just like that, up into second position on the back wheel of Ricky Carmichael. And we saw the 12 of Villeman there also very much in evidence. And uh, here we go. Ricky Carmichael is your leader. Bubba Stewart is right there. The crowd's going crazy. You know, these two are such a class of the field. They always find their way to the front. Even if they don't get the best jump off the gate, uh, two or three turns into the race, they're always one and two, and Reed's always right there as well. Well, we saw a worst-case scenario last week when both of them had problems early in the race. Carmichael right in the very first turn, and James Stewart a little bit later. They somehow managed to both get up to the front, put on this kind of a show for the fans, and uh, get on the podium just as if nothing had happened. They are so much faster than everybody else in the field right now, and look at the gap they already have pulling away from third place. And we haven't seen this yet, you know, at, at Hangtown we had different scenarios where Ricky crashed or James had a bad start. They were never together from the very beginning. And so now they've got 35 minutes here to race each other and, and uh, get to the checkered flag first. A somewhat distant third is the number 22 Yamaha of Chad Reed. We just saw the tail, end, tail side of him there as Carmichael continues to lead Stewart. And this great battle has the crowd on its feet. Yes, the, the terrible towels and whatever else they use here at Mount Morris are very much in evidence. Carmichael and Stewart in that order. Stewart looks like he's trying awful hard to show Ricky a wheel here and there. Yeah, he's like said inside line coming up that hill. He keeps kind of scrubbing those bumps and trying to get inside of Ricky. And uh, you, you got to keep in mind here, you can watch him. He's constantly inside or outside of wherever Ricky is. You know, that, that roost hurts so bad. It'll, take your goggles away and, and uh, man, mainly it just hurts. So uh, it's difficult to be able to follow a guy uh, and stay on his pace, but not run his exact line. He's got to always be just a little inside or outside and drop into the, the good line in the turns, but stay out of that roost when he's coming out of the corners. Track holding up pretty well. Not a lot of super deep ruts that we saw last week in the mud at Hangtown. So the uh, conditions here nearly perfect, not only for the fans, but for the racers. Stewart is just trying so hard and Carmichael looks pretty relaxed up front. Yeah, I think Ricky knows it's it's a long moto, you know, 40 minutes back and forth. Uh, he's going to pace himself a little bit. He's going to save something in the tank for the end of the race and, and just try to not make any mistakes, put in the best laps he can. Well, you can't hold your breath and grit your teeth for an entire 35-minute moto. Ricky Carmichael out of Havana, Florida. The team Makita Suzuki, RMZ 450, up front, but not by much. No more than a bike length or two separating him from the Kawasaki of Stewart. No, and you know, these two pushing at this pace, it'll be interesting to see which one's got the stamina, which one doesn't. Ricky's known for his uh, hardcore training regimen. He's always been one of the fittest riders on the track, but you know, this is, this is what he prepares for, is battles like this, where he's got to go the entire moto and put his fastest lap in at the end of the race. We haven't really seen that with James. He's never really been pressed uh, that, that hard that long, but um, we're going to see it right now, what's, what's going to happen. Stewart now behind Carmichael. The gap has not increased nor decreased particularly. And here in this, this first couple of laps, it appears as though James Stewart just studying Ricky Carmichael, looking for perhaps a spot here or there where he might be able to make a pass. And if he thinks he's faster, then pull away. Yeah, you follow a guy, you'll kind of find where sections where you're quicker, sections where he's quicker, and you try to make up that difference. It's always an advantage being the guy behind initially because you can find where, okay, he's a little quicker here. Why? How? You know, where can I uh, make up time? And you'll follow his lines and and uh, sort of improve you, your riding in that area when you've still got the sections where you're quicker and you can try to make a pass there. Stewart trying a couple of things here and there. He lost the 40th annual Kawasaki Monster Energy High Point National here at High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Ricky Carmichael and James Bubba Stewart, a match race. At least you would think so. They're so far ahead of third place Chad Reed and fourth place Davey Millsaps really carrying on a battle here. And now comes James Stewart. Gets in front of Carmichael for the first time. There's the move. We saw him setting it up for a few laps prior to that. Yeah, he kept popping a wheel in there, and, and he knew he was a little quicker and uh, just set it up that lap and made it happen. So now James Stewart out in front, reaches off the handlebars there for a tear off. Carmichael gets a chance to study his young fast opponent here on the green number seven. So Carmichael shuffled back into second spot 
as James Stewart, the points leader, who won his first outdoor motocross national one weekend ago, is now your leader here at Mount Morris. You know, I don't think this is any reason for Ricky to hit the panic button. He's probably, uh, it's probably an advantage for him now. He can look and see where James was going faster. Why did he pass him there? What was he doing different? And, and uh, he's still got his sections where he's quick and he can kind of combine the two and, and make another run at James here as the moto wears on. And now, as it was for Stewart, Carmichael has to find a spot out of the roost off of Stewart's Kawasaki to try to be able to maintain his vision all the way to the end. He's dropped back a little bit there, given Stewart, I guess you could say, plenty of room. Grab for your that throttle and look at your mechanic and throw your hand up. Done so that a time or two. There's Ricky Carmichael, probably a second or two, I'm going to say two seconds behind James Stewart right now. This is the biggest gap by far that either of them has had over the other. No surprise that James Stewart, once he got to the front, is going to show the speed that he's shown in practice. Yeah, I guess that's the two seconds of lap you're seeing right there. It, uh, it is a little surprising to me. I haven't seen Ricky just kind of let someone go like that in a long time. Ricky Carmichael regathering himself perhaps for an attack against the leader James Stewart. Stewart is the points leader, so Carmichael can't afford to sit back and rest on his points lead, which has usually been the case. And here's uh, an example of the shorter lap times. These leaders are getting into traffic a little quicker than they have in years past here at High Point. Yeah, I mean, we're just a few laps into the race here, and they're already lapping. You know, good riders. I saw Kyle Lewis go by there earlier, so... Uh, this is going to play into the race. It's going to be a factor for sure. It's for the leader. It's definitely tougher to get by. The lapper doesn't know he's being lapped until the leader comes by. And then once he does, if he hears a bike behind him, he'll go, oh, that must be second. That must be third. So a little easier for Ricky to get by a rider uh, after James has already sort of made the statement. You can see Kyle Lewis waves Ricky by right there. And Carmichael goes past using the courtesy. And you can see the riders that are being lapped are giving them all the racetrack they possibly can. And uh, here's Goose giving Ricky some lap time signals at this in the mechanic signal area, which is a new area here at this racetrack as well, along with some tunnels where the fans can get back and forth to different parts of the racetrack. Now, when this track goes back and forth through that valley, as you G out at the base of those valleys, it gets very, very rutted. They till this dirt up really deep, and uh, it causes a lot of ruts, even when it's not rainy here, which is most every year. But uh, on the occasion you get good weather like this year, uh, it's still very soft soil, very good soil, so it will get rutted, especially where the bikes are pressing down into the dirt. A little bit of a save there by Stewart as he works through traffic, going past the number 38 of uh, Jeff DeMint out of Kingwood, Texas on a Suzuki. And Carmichael has used the traffic to catch up just a little bit. Now they are pretty much together once again. Yeah, that lap traffic's definitely going to play a part. Uh, in fact, a lot of times, if James will get held up for one second, behind somebody in a rut, Ricky can sweep right around the outside and get them both. So it'll be interesting to see how they get their way through traffic. Carmichael making a run at the number seven Kawasaki. They go past Justin Buckaloo out of Arizona on a Honda and continue their battle up front. Third place is so far back that this is just about all we have uh, the opportunity to watch here. What a great fight for first place. Carmichael right there in the wheel tracks pretty much now of Stewart. One, two, there it is. Less than a second difference between them at this point, and the crowd is love at this. Before the halfway point in the race, you can see him lapping guys. You know, I see him come up on Sean Hamlin here. He was a, a top three, top five guy in this class a couple years ago. He's had some struggles this year, but still a great rider. You know, it just shows you how fast these two are going. Watching the leaders, but taking a look here at the running order at the bottom of the screen. Take a look. Hopefully you can find your best rider, your favorite rider. And uh, we'll take a look at the top 20 here as we continue to watch James Bubba Stewart and Ricky Carmichael battling for the lead. Stewart, Carmichael, a little bit more traffic there. What do they have to do to change? You know, they have an ideal line. If no one's in front of them, they have to change their lines constantly with lap riders in front. Exactly. Those lap riders, you know, they're still racing. They're passing guys who are racing for 10th through 15th place already. So they're still, they're already up into the pack of competitive riders that are running the, the main race lines. So they've got to go lines they haven't done since practice, uh, completely different sides of the track. So it definitely makes you think, and it'll get these riders mixing it up back and forth. Very close there as Carmichael came down the right side of the hill and almost made a pass on Stewart. Now Carmichael with a big drive off the outside. Stewart holds the lead, though. So they're riding very different lines, which makes the racing that much more interesting. Uh, because they're on different parts of the racetrack. You don't know who might just jet by the other one with a small mistake any moment. That's right. This soft soil, the way it ruts up as well, it'll cause a lot of mistakes. Uh, you come into that thing just a little too fast, a little too far inside or outside, just miss that line. 
uh, it'll cost you a couple of seconds. So got to be very, very perfect in these corners. Getting the bike set up just right, making it do what you want it to do underneath, absorb most of the impact. Stewart and Carmichael, two of the best in the world on top line equipment as they continue to hound one another. Carmichael behind Stewart right now, who's riding like a man possessed up for, whoa, a little mistake there as he got wide coming over the top. And Carmichael closed up a bit on Stewart with that small, small mistake. Now, here comes Carmichael down the inside, can't make the move. And Stewart still leads, lap rider right there on the line. Well, we're gonna see how Stewart handles pressure here. He's got Ricky all over him. Uh, this is a very long moto, so he's gonna he's gonna have some pressure for 35 minutes. Our Toyota leaderboard takes second weekend of racing in the outdoor motocross season. James Stewart, Ricky Carmichael have delivered as promised all race long so far here today. It looks like Ricky's starting to push the issue with James. You know, he's been following him now for a while. Uh, it's got to be getting time. He's thinking, you know, I need to get by this guy and uh, and get these three extra points for this moto win. James just looks like he's trying a lot harder than Ricky, meaning the effort is more obvious. Not that, not that there's more effort, just that it's more obvious. Look at this. You can see Ricky wanted to dive to the inside there to get a pass. James came over a little bit, blocked the line, and, and Ricky had to lock him up. Went off the track a little bit. But he's recovered. He's right back there. We can expect the pressure to continue. They both go inside of a lap rider who, once again, pulls over, showing them the courtesy that they deserve as the leaders. Stewart opening a little bit of a gap. Here comes Carmichael again. Where is the spot on the track where Ricky Carmichael might decide to try to make a move? Yeah, it's hard to say where his quicker point was. You know, James had that spot where he, right here where he kept going inside a little bit, showing him a wheel, showing him a wheel, and he finally made the pass stick. Uh, maybe it's that downhill where Ricky came around and showed him a wheel there. Maybe he'll do it there. Up over one of the tunnels that the fans can use to move from one part of the racetrack to the other. Stewart still leads Carmichael. Third place, not even in sight. James Stewart on the number seven, Kawasaki. Ricky Carmichael on the number four, Suzuki. They've been like this since the drop of the flag. Carmichael in the air, pulls up alongside. Stewart has to know he's there. Hear that Suzuki right next to him. Oh, Ricky Carmichael is all over James Stewart now. Side by side into a right-hander. Stewart's got the position. He'll hold the lead, but Carmichael is right there. Through the mechanic signal area. Of course, some of the most interested spectators of this race are the guys wrenching on the bikes. And all they can do is stand there and watch. James Stewart, Ricky Carmichael, one, two. You can see all the ruts in between those jumps, just how it's rutted and soft this soil gets. Oh, Ricky making a little mistake there, but every single jump out there is like that. It just looks like someone took a giant comb and raked it up the jump. Just deep grooves. They'll drag your pegs as you come off. Uh, so it, it makes you have to be that much more precise when you're coming up a jump. You can't just kind of hit it anywhere. You've got to line up for that rut 50 feet early and know exactly where you're going to go. Stewart with a bigger lead than he had a few moments ago because of that minor little off-track excursion by Carmichael. He's got a lot of work to do, and he's got to do it over again. He was right there behind Stewart a moment ago, and now he's a somewhat more distant second. You definitely don't want to give either one of these guys a gap like this. You give them a little bit of room where they can run their own lines. They don't have to ride defensively, uh, and it makes it a lot easier for them to turn in quick laps. And James has already proven he can run Ricky's speed, so... Uh, you know, Carmichael's now going to have to find a couple of seconds somewhere to close that gap. He's working hard trying to do exactly that. James Stewart out in front right now with only lap riders to worry about as he completes these final laps of the first moto here on the High Point Raceway Mount Morris weekend. Up over the tunnel once again. And the number 11 of Travis Preston in front of the leaders right now. Yes, very good riders have gone a lap down here at High Point, and it didn't take long. Stewart. Oh, James Stewart with a huge mistake, and that hurt. He went in head first off the top of that jump and is not looking real perky right now as he reaches to take his goggles off. The AMA officials, of course, directing everybody else out of the way. The number 799 there, Terry Otten, a uh, Michigan rider, comes through, and there is major, major panic going on among the corner workers and course workers right now here as James Stewart is down. And lost in all of that just for a moment. Ricky Carmichael has inherited the lead, and that looks serious for James. Take another look. He kind of slid coming out of that turn. It looks like his back wheel didn't follow his front wheel in the rut he was in. Oh. And uh, 
didn't get the drive off the top of that jump. Front end just dropped. That's horrible. Oh, and Carmichael comes by, manages to miss both the rider and the bike with the great awareness and control. Take another look. You can watch it again here. His back wheel slides a little bit. He's got his front wheel lined up into a rut, and his back wheel doesn't follow it. And when he hits that little kicker, his back wheel's in another line. Just drops the front end down immediately. Oh, and he knew before that front wheel hit the ground that that was going to be bad, and it was going to be a tough save. He couldn't pull it together. James Stewart down and out, apparently, of this first moto. To see something like happen. Like remains, will Stewart recover enough to take part in moto two? Here's the checkered flag. It's official. Ricky Carmichael wins the opening moto here on weekend number two of the motocross championship. You stated to me earlier this afternoon, keep your eye on this first moto because it's going to be one of the most epic battles in history. You proved your point exactly, but not quite the way you had planned it to plan out. Uh, not quite the way I wanted to. You know, James got the whole shot and uh, uh, he made a mistake. I got by him and he was behind me and got by me and uh, I, I started catching him with about six, seven laps to go and uh, couldn't get by him, couldn't get by him, closed it. I tried to catch him, sneak inside and he closed the door and uh, I made a mistake so I had to play catch up again with about three laps to go. And, man, he crashed. I hate to get it that way. I really do. You know, we, had, we had a killer race going. So hopefully he gets back out for the next moto and do some battle. Well, the track is ready and the starting gates are set to drop here. We'll take a look. Of course, the first order of business is the whole shot. Let's see who gets it in that mad scramble down to turn number one. Ricky Carmichael in number four, Suzuki, always prominent at the start. Tough call to make here for the whole shot award. Let's do it out front now, and uh, that's that's going to be interesting. Ricky's in third, so he's close enough to keep, keep on him, but... But James gets a little momentum going, and he could run away with this. And you've already talked about many, many times how difficult it is to pass here on this track. How often it, uh, and David Villeman having a problem here on his Yamaha YZ450. These big four strokes are hard to start, and even with mechanics standing right there, he had to do all the kicking himself. That's Jacob Saylor up near the front. He's a privateer. I think he might have gotten the whole shot. That's, uh, that's another privateer. We had a privateer get a whole shot in the lights class. I don't know what's going on with this starting gate here, but uh, it's favoring some of the uh, privateer guys. Well, Jacob Saylor on the 198, not to be confused with the 199, Travis Pastrana. James Stewart on the number seven, Kawasaki out in front with Ricky Carmichael. And uh, Saylor losing spots here, kind of one after the other. And if he indeed was the whole shot winner, we still haven't gotten official word on that. We'll certainly let you know. Bill Saps lives in Cairo, Georgia, very close to Florida. There's a lot of sand down there, so he's uh, very fluent in the sand. Chad Reed on the number 22 Yamaha. There's Sailor. We continue to watch riders streaming through and taking so many different lines around the racetrack. There's John Dowd. You can see him inside the top 10. You now at 40 years old, this guy's amazing. Still coming out, does a couple nationals a year, and uh, and he just he's amazing that he can come in and get a top 10 uh, at that age, doing it part time. Well, Dowdy, one of the great veterans, one of the real iron men of the sport, and always a pleasure to watch him race. James Stewart, Ricky Carmichael, though, that's been the headline act all season long. Wasn't really prepared for it, but people love to see him come out, and it's great to just have him be a part of the event. That yellow Suzuki with a number four on it is now challenging James Stewart for the lead. Stewart's speed, perhaps second to none, but the consistency and the experience of Ricky Carmichael has him once again in the driver's seat for the championship. Not any given weekend, he's already acknowledged that James is hard to keep up with on a given day. But for Ricky Carmichael, he's in there for the months that it takes to win a title. You know, most people are just way too conservative. I mean, that's what these guys have is just that, that desire to win. If it was me, if I was leading a race and I just had a big crash, I'd maybe just say, well, you know what, I'll take it easy and settle here. I don't want to crash again. Maybe second's good. James just doesn't settle for that. He, he wants to win, and he's just going to absolutely do whatever he can do to win. It's as though he has no memory of how bad it hurt to be stuck in the ground at the last round. He, he just needs, goes right out and flies. He needs to watch that tape a couple more times. It makes you know, my teeth hurt. Or maybe he doesn't. I mean, here he is leading, and... and uh, he looks like he's got things in control. James, if you can hear me, just keep doing what you're doing. It's beyond me to try to tell you how to do this, how to, how to craft your sport. Ricky Carmichael watching and studying. You know he's being patient and looking for a weakness or even waiting for a mistake. 
And, you know, Ricky, you can see he has got to stay wide. He's got to try to stay out of James Roost. You know, it, he's in his lines coming out of those turns. Uh, he's just getting face fulls of sand. So if he's going to stay on his wheel like this the entire moto, he's, he's got to stay off to one side or the other to save his goggles. You know, they, they used to be able to run, only, only able to run five, six, seven tear-offs before it started to look like you were looking through the bottom of a Coke bottle. But uh, now they can run up to 21, 24 tear-offs with these laminated packs that come in seven or eight of them that look like one. So that does help, but still you get sand in your mouth, you're, you're breathing it into your lungs, you're coughing it up. Um, you can see him just crisscrossing back and forth across the roofs. Having a look up the inside there, and indeed, Carmichael trying to go left to right, right to left. It's almost like a water skier in the wake of a boat. He's got to go to one side and then the other to try to stay out of that all that turbulent sand in this case. And as rough as this track is, I mean, it's hard to appreciate how fast these guys are going. They are absolutely flying right now. Well, I'm also making a no taking notice of what you talked about and how much faster the two leaders are than anybody behind them. Their aggression and their body language and the pure speed with which they take these turns is visible. It's visible. You can see it. Yeah, it's, it, it is, and it, it shows up on a stopwatch big time. So behind these two, no disrespect to any of those guys, but uh, they're way off the pace. Well, everybody's going as fast as they can. It's just that these two can go a lot faster than everybody else. Yeah, we need to sit their parents down and find out what, what kind of ridiculous genetic cloning they did to uh, come up with these two. Well, there's a lot of hard work involved in it as well, and we know how hard Ricky Carmichael trains. We know how hard James Stewart trains, and that is part of why, along with genetics, they're out in front of everybody else and in a class by themselves. Well, a lot of guys train. I don't know, but not a lot of guys can ride like these two. Something special about them, that's for sure. And you just got to enjoy it while they're here and while they're both racing together, because this is the last season you're going to see it in its entirety. Well, it certainly reminds us of many of the great glory days in the past when there were two and three riders contesting week in and week out for championships. And they were hard fought right down to the finish, as we know this outdoor season is going to be in 2006. Working through some traffic right now. Carmichael and Stewart trying to make some room on an already crowded track. You know, in the first lights class moto, we had a bunch of mechanical DNFs. The sand is very, very hard on engines. Sand plugs up the radiators, makes the bikes run hot. It's very deep, so it's constantly pulling down on the motor, and, and they're just adding to the, the temperature, which is a big issue with these four strokes, and uh, gets into a lot of the parts. Sometimes you can suck sand through your air filter. So it'll be interesting to see if we have any mechanical problems. Side by side, Carmichael and Stewart. Carmichael making his first bid to take the lead here, and he is edged in front just ever so slightly. Stewart with a shorter inside line, though, will be able to fight back, and the lap rider, number 31, and that is uh, Jason Thomas, is probably thinking, wow, this is cool. JT Money's a sand rider from Florida. You think he'd have, you know, a little bit of speed for these guys, but nobody does. Also nice that James and Ricky can race clean. You know, uh, Ricky swung in from the outside. James could have left it on and just T-boned him, put them both on the ground, they race clean. So Ricky Carmichael is out in front, working through the traffic as we look at our Toyota. No problem. Ricky Carmichael, though, setting a standard. Oh, and making a mistake. He disappeared out of the shot so quickly, you couldn't tell, but he's down on the racetrack, picks the bike up. Here's where we're going to figure out just how far behind Stewart was, but now James Stewart goes flashing by and has become the leader in this one. Carmichael's going to have to try to run him down all over again. Well, you could see Ricky when he came out of that sweeper there, he just got into a bump too deep and the back end swapped back around. And, and he was able to get the bike started, but he has lost a bunch of ground. It would have been more except for the pace that he was setting up front. So James Stewart now with the white flag waving on the last lap has inherited the lead, and if he's able to ride error-free, will pick up a win. Well, that's great for James. I mean, he's uh, you got to commend him just just for coming out and racing. Uh, you know, most riders wouldn't even do that. He's he's a tough kid, and he seems to be from another world. To come back from that kind of an accident to even race at all, never mind pick up a win in the very next moto. James Stewart. In fact, I wonder if Ricky will go all Da Vinci Code on us and start whipping himself this week. The AMA Toyota Motocross Championship finishes after this. Ricky, deja vu what took place here at Southwick last year. You were like a predator hunting its prey there for a bit, but then the track came up and bit you. What happened? Yeah, just uh, 
suspension went down and kind of rebounded me back and uh, fell down. That's ah, a shame, man. I uh, felt good and uh, you know I kind of got up, caught behind James, was just riding his pace and uh, should have tried to make a move a little earlier. But you know what? Hey, hats off to him. Uh, he beat me. Sort of had a gift handed to you. You were in the lead there for a while. Was it sheer adrenaline that you were running on? Yeah, you know. Uh, <sighs> So painful out there riding, you know. Plus, you know, we're not coming to one of the smoothest tracks of the year. You know, south where you got to stand up a lot, and uh, it's just taking a beating on my knee. But, you know, I felt like I rode good. You know, Ricky uh, got around me. Then I started actually catching him a little bit, and then he made that mistake in the back. But, uh, you know, it was fun. You know, I didn't even feel like uh, I, I would even be this close. So, uh, you know, it's just a, it's an honor to be up here, so I'm happy. James Stewart making it happen. Gets his it's way, at least. As we get set here for moto number two, the gates are up. And the gates are down. Ricky Carmichael, center of the screen on the number four, sits back to get some traction. Is he going to get hole shot number two? Yes, it appears as though he did. And right behind him once again, James Bubba Stewart. So the two best motocrossers in the world have found one another again here at the start of Moto2. It's like deja vu, man. Same guys right up front. And Timmy Ferry, I think, slotted into third position. Thought I saw the number 15. Carmichael already opening a little bit of a gap on James Stewart. He was pretty happy about beating James straight up, as he put it, for the first time. Yeah, it surprised me. I mean, he's won the Supercross title against him. Uh, he's got a huge lead in this series, and yet still uh, there was people saying, oh, well, anytime James stays on two wheels, he beats Ricky. And I think, I think that aided RC a lot. He didn't like people saying that. And uh, So even still at this stage of the game, uh, at this point in this series, he still is happy to beat him straight up. And finding ways to motivate himself, even after, as I said, he has nothing left to prove. James Stewart trying to stay close. Carmichael on the force said uh, that he and his mechanic had made some changes and the bike was awesome. So even though they are virtually perfection personified, they keep making, uh, trying to make it better. Yeah, he said after that first moto, he felt like uh, this was the best he's ever had this bike. And uh, he can push it as hard as he wants and the bike's not holding him back. So. Uh, that's great if, if those are changes that are consistent at every single track and not just here this weekend. Uh, that's great for him. He's going to continue to chop his lap times down. Well, he said he felt like it as we look at James Bubba Stewart is the leader. Ricky Carmichael has tipped over, gotten back up, kept it running, and now he's going to have to chase the number seven here. So we might see some racing between these two because Carmichael made a mistake and now Stewart is your leader. It looked like it was going to be an RC runaway, but now uh, these two are going to have to fight it out. Well, James's dad is very interested in how this is going to continue to go. Our Toyota leaderboard tells us the rest of the team here at the Monster Energy Kawasaki Red Bud National and putting some new information on the board for the next time Ricky Carmichael comes around. He's not the leader. Instead, it's James Stewart. Here's Carmichael behind him. And let's watch this. This is what the fans paid their money for. Carmichael versus Stewart. I don't know what happened to Ricky back in that turn, but it couldn't have been that big a deal. He obviously kept the bike going. He's uh, didn't lose that much time, but enough to let James Stewart slip by. James Stewart leading Ricky Carmichael, trying to make up some ground here as the two of them battle. Let's go to Aaron Bates for a quick report. Yeah, you know when you see 450s coming up a little short on it that uh, it's a big jump. And there's always guys, uh, always a couple guys in the lights class that'll try it in practice. Michael Lessie tried it this weekend. Uh, blew his rear wheel out and, and uh, thought better of, better of it doing it again. And Carmichael did it as well in practice. So these guys are well aware of uh, what happens when you come up short. Ricky Carmichael chasing James Stewart right now in the air. And down the face of the jump now. The fans are going crazy now. The, the crowd has really come alive here. And Ricky Carmichael, giving them their money's worth, probably didn't want to tip over there and have to do this. But <laughs> the fans are loving it nevertheless. The Paps Blue Ribbon's kicking in right at the right time here. These two are going to get together and, uh, and race this one out. We could reach critical mass here at Red Bud Track and Trail with the fans going crazy. James Stewart, Ricky Carmichael, 1-2 on the racetrack. Carmichael winner of the first moto with Stewart second. And, of course, if Stewart is able to hold on and win this one over Ricky Carmichael, he would be the overall winner as well. And that's a little bit of extra wind in his sail. I mean, when he saw Ricky down, I'm sure he went, hey, this is my chance. If I can win this moto, I get the overall. Uh, you know, that's that's got to boost his confidence. He saw Ricky pulling him. Uh, he knows his speed maybe wasn't quite there, but um, 
I'm sure he's making a run for it now. He's going to lay it all out on the line. Well, he definitely pulled a lot closer there through the whoops and at the tail end of it, almost gets up inside. Stewart saws him off at the front. Here comes Carmichael carrying huge speed, makes the pass. And Stewart trying to come back around the outside. They're in two different ruts. Stewart crosses back over on the inside, can't make it happen. Ricky Carmichael takes the lead and holds it. Now he's just roosting all over James. And Ricky's just on it. You can tell he feels comfortable. He's cutting inside of him, running it inside. Uh, he's feeling good. You're not going to beat this guy. Well, they said they made changes to the bike, and he felt like it was as be the best it's ever been. So Ricky Carmichael showing the effects of when man and machine work as one. James Stewart taking the way outside line, trying to stay out of some of that roost. And will he have anything for RC in the closing laps of this second moto? We'll have to wait and see. You can see it kind of looks like Ricky can square up and pivot and hit any line he wants. He can make that bike go wherever he wants to go, uh, where some guys are having to swing around the outside and, and pivot and bank off of a berm. Uh, Ricky can just square that thing up at will and, and uh, make a turn. Looks like it's turning just great. Rotating around the steering head there, he plants the front wheel, the back wheel just digging as hard as it can. James, on the other hand, looks like his Kawasaki trying to push in some of the same turns, and he can't get it to lay down and change direction. Carmichael, oh yeah, he's opening a gap now. Stewart's riding as hard as he can, and Ricky's just riding away from him. I'd be curious to hear what these guys have changed on Ricky's bike. I mean, whether it's uh, uh, the triple clamps, uh, you know, they can try all kinds of little things. Just a millimeter here or there will make a difference that you can feel. And uh, sometimes it's just a matter of, of getting the rider comfortable. If, if he likes it, the triple clamps or bars a little forward, a little further back, the seat a little higher, a little lower, a little more sag. Big bike class, but whatever it is, something needs to be done. This, this cat keeps running away with these races. Well, he has taken a step, sort of, to do something about it himself, announcing that this is the last season he will run a full championship schedule. Well, Ricky Carmichael is putting on a show, perhaps one last time for the fans here at Redbud. Carmichael will win moto number two and take the overall at the same time. You tell everybody just appreciates his talent and uh, his skill. All, all the other teams, you know, managers and mechanics clapping and waving at him as, as he goes take by. Off every first time around and uh, far the far end from this side is not where you want to be. You want to be somewhere down close to this end of the start as the gate drops and off they go. And some of the real fast starters get out of there in a big hurry into turn number one. As they make the corner to the to the line, it's Davey Millsaps on the number 118 out front. Not sure if he got to the white line first for the whole shot award, but he's got the lead. I saw Carmichael buried in the pack. He's, he's mid-pack at best. So he's got his work cut out for him as well. Well, Carmichael with a big points lead, maybe can afford to be a little cautious, but not that cautious. Millsaps out in front, then Wyndham, then Dan Sani. What the heck happened to Millsaps? When did this kid become such a good starter? I think this is three in a row, four in a row for him as far as hole shots go. Chad Reed moves into third around Dan Sani, and we go back, still no sign of A, number seven, James Stewart, or B, number four, Ricky Carmichael. Got a glimpse of Stewart just then, but still no Makita Suzuki. Well, this is a perfect scenario. The faster guys kind of buried at the back uh, with these three out front who have all been potential podium sitters, but maybe not having quite the speed to win. But maybe getting out front here and and uh, getting out front early will help them. And Wyndham has actually won here not too long ago. Wow. So, But Wyndham just lost the number two spot to Chad Reed, who seems to have lit a fire under himself here in moto number one at Washougal. Reed riding very aggressively in the early going has taken over the first third and now second this is a new section of the track this little uphill and left brand new for this year very tight looks like they slowed it down a little bit up through that section k-dub on the number 14 honda showed us some real signs of life in denver battling with Millsaps. now you see he's that? third there's stewart four you see that little shiny groove as those guys come through the woods here you see where it gets real shiny. That's very, very slippery. They squirt a little water down to keep the dust down, but uh, it's just like glass. It's so slippery. So these guys having to really work the throttle through there. Chad Reed through the wall. Ability to do it, which these top few guys do have. So not to point any fingers or say that any of them are doing it, but I, I think we, we would be wise uh, to just, you know, put the testing in there a couple times a year uh, and at least let these let everybody know that, hey, if you're considering it, consider that you might get caught. All the top riders have, have gone on record as saying that they would welcome it because they adhere. Oh, down goes Chad Reed, and there's nothing that comes out 
of a drug lab that's going to help when you just fall over. But Chad Reed, now that it's raining, is finding out that the Washougal track is not only wet where they've watered it, but it's wet where Mother Nature is putting something down. Now, the good news for him is that he didn't really lose that much time nor that many positions. In fact, perhaps just one. Well, like I said, this ground is very, very hard and shiny. It looks like it's good traction, but you can see there that little light patch. That's just shiny, hard, slick dirt. And with this little bit of sprinkling rain coming down, uh, it looked like his front end just started to push. If it was not so slippery, he would have probably pulled that one off and saved it, but uh, just absolutely no traction. The front end slid out from under. Losing two spots to James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael. There are those who would say it might have happened anyway. But Chad Reed tipping over, makes it a lot easier for Stewart. Here comes Carmichael, and these two have resumed their battle this time for the lead. And apparently both pretty much, if not at, 100%. Well, here we go again. If you're not smiling right now, you're not a motocross fan, because this is what it's all about. The gap behind them tells the story. These two are the class of the field when they're both running at full tilt. And so James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael, as Carmichael goes inside, can't quite get close enough to make the pass. Stewart is there, Carmichael right behind him. And yes, if you're a motocross fan, you're smiling right now, and if you look close, you'll see smiles on the faces of the fans around the fences here. Carmichael goes outside, crosses back in with a great drive up the hill. They flatten it out side by side, little kick outs there, and here they come in tandem. James Stewart with Ricky Carmichael right behind him. Inside goes Carmichael again to take the lead, but not for long. And he does it again, side by side. Pushes Stewart out off the edge of the track. And Ricky Carmichael takes advantage by a couple of bike lengths. You know this is not over. Well, Ricky's been definitely forcing the issue. Any, anytime these two get together, he doesn't waste a lot of time. He, he gets in there. If he's got to bump him, he did it at Bud's Creek. Uh, he'll, just, he'll just shove you out of the way. Yeah, that's it, how he gets around you now. And the rain has subsided for the time being, so the track Whatever. Oh, Stewart turns the favor right back. Comes in and blasts Carmichael to take the lead. Oh, snap. Now, how angry is Ricky Carmichael right now? He's been doing that to James all year. I think James just finally said, hey. So James Stewart retakes the lead in dramatic fashion. Whether real anger or just that competitive spirit that both of these men have is going to rise to the top. That's exactly what we have to think here as Stewart and Carmichael resume their rivalry, resume their battle. It's Moto One at Washougal, and stay with us. Championship by FMF. This is what they had in mind when they put the season together. James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael going after each other. Hammer and tong, as our British colleagues would like to say, and Carmichael trying to find another way around. Now, they've both exchanged sort of uh, rabbit punches, if you will. Now, let's see if the real knockout, if either one can deliver it. Well, Ricky pushed him off the track. There wasn't a whole lot of contact there, but he, he definitely didn't leave him any room. And James went off the track, had to go around a jump. And when James came back, he, he ran straight into Ricky. He shoved him right completely off the track. So Now Carmichael just took the lead again in a very gentlemanly pass by comparison. So apparently the, uh, the hostilities have subsided somewhat, at least with an exchange of block passes. Carmichael now with the advantage, and Stewart trying to find a way back around. Well, these two, for the most part, they'll race clean together. They're, they're not going to, uh, there's no bitterness there between the two of them, but they both really want to win, and if there's only a little bit of room to make a pass, uh, these guys are going to take it. They're going to open that gap up. Every bit of me wants to think that both in, on both occasions, they were laughing under their helmets, saying, wow, that was good. All right, I like that. I'll give you back some of your, some of your own medicine here in just a minute. So it's that competitive fire that Carmichael and Stewart possess in huge quantities that's uh, motivating them right now as they work through some traffic there going past Mike Lapag Lapaglia from uh, California on his Suzuki. You see Lapaglia ducking his head down. When you're coming up that hill behind a 450, oh, man, you better have a chest protector on it. You will just be welted up. James Stewart getting close to Carmichael once again as they work the track here at Washougal after a little rain shower. Yes, there's some mud covering both rider and machine. Stewart almost a little short on that last jump, but made it look like he meant to do that. Can you see how fast these guys are going through these turns? They're just dropping into these ruts, leaned completely over flat and pinning it. This pace they've got going right now is ridiculous. 
Well, it's easy to tell how much faster they are than everyone else. Do you see anyone else on the same lap? No. I, I wish Reedy wouldn't have fallen because it would have been interesting to see how his pace held up with these two. Would have really added something to the battle, but. Carmichael and Stewart working through lap traffic right now, and those riders doing the best they can to get out of the way in some parts of the track where there's hardly two lines. And besides, there are two guys coming up behind them. You have to leave two lines. Stewart gets through clean, lost a little bit of ground to Carmichael. Carmichael with a big advantage right now here in moto number one. Working traffic just a little bit better. James has got to go back to work to try to close the gap again. He can do it. Coming up on the final lap, Carmichael and Stewart with the white flag waving. Still a little bit of traffic in front of them. The number 361 there, Colton Facciotti from Canada. You've seen Ricky Carmichael have to change his strategy. He used to be so much more fit than anyone else on the track. He could just take his time, be very patient. He knew at about the 20 minute mark, everybody would slow down and he would actually get faster. And uh, what James has done is just, he's made that strategy not work anymore. James is just as fit. Uh, he's faster than Ricky used to be. So Ricky had to increase his speed and, and, uh, and attack right from the beginning. I mean, James isn't dropping off his rear wheel here at all. Ricky's have, having to push all the way to the finish. So uh, I would be interesting to be a fly on the wall at their uh, little team meetings and see what Ricky's strategy is. You know, it's, it's got to be just, hey, get to the front as fast as you can and haul butt because James is going to be right there. Well, James is right there, but seems to be coming up on lappers in slightly less opportune moments. So Carmichael's been able to maintain this gap for the last lap. And we're on the final lap right now, but Stewart isn't cutting him any slack. And he's not backing off either. He wants Ricky to know that he can finish right behind him. These are the turns I'm talking about. Look how fast they get through these corners. Carmichael on the final lap here at moto number one, still working traffic. James Stewart doing everything he can to try to get up there and make a race out of it as Carmichael continues to bounce it around and ride aggressively. The only thing that Stewart might have is a little less race fitness than Ricky Carmichael because he's had a few weeks off here and there. Yeah, he has taken some time off. At Colorado last weekend, I think he was definitely sort of blowing the cobwebs off. And he's obviously a little bit better here. And I think as the season goes on these last four races, he'll get even better and even better. These races will get more fun to watch because uh, James is just going to continue to get more comfortable racing again. And they're going to continue to work out the little glitches that they've got on that bike, if there are any, if, it's, if that uh, rebounding issue is as big a problem as they're saying. And uh, when, when they figure those little things out, James is going to take off a tenth here, a half a second there, and, and he'll be even closer to Ricky if that's possible. And of course, the fans are the winners. Even though Stewart is out of the championship, even by his own admission, the fans who lean over the fences every week at places like Washougal want to see good racing like this. Pass and repass between Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart. In the end, Carmichael prevails. Oh, Ricky's waving him up. I wonder what this is all about. Well, it looks like some good sportsmanship in the end. Fit and healthy, James, what a battle you two just had. Probably one of the best races ever. Yeah, you know, um, it feels good just to be back up here running, you know. Uh, got actually a full weekend in riding, and uh, man, Kawasaki, these guys busted their butt working on his motorcycle, and it's a lot better from where we've been. So all we can do is improve. We got a break after this, so I'm really excited about getting back and, and getting back to where I should be at. Would you say that that's probably one of the best battles you've ever had? Uh, it definitely ranks up there. I've been around a long time, so I've had some good, uh, good battles. But uh, you know what? I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, great that everyone's 100%. And uh, you know, I definitely got to say, man, I put a cheap shot on him in the back. Uh, really, not my character, but you know, I was, I was struggling to get by. I was waiting, 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 and uh, getting by him clean was, was going to be tough. So I forced the issue, and then. Uh, <laughs> He returned the favor back at me, and then uh, the, the second time to make it stick, I ended up getting a good pass by him. That all of them will do, no, no doubt, because they have to stay in shape. Millville is, in fact, just a little over a week away. Gates drop for motor number two. Ricky Carmichael looking for a better start. James Stewart fighting for the whole shot award, and I don't I think he got it. Looked like he and Ricky sort of bumped bars coming out of the gate. And uh, it left Ricky back a ways. Rick's about He's... six or seventh there on the left side of the screen, hopping over the hill on the number four bike as we watch the field thundering 
around the track here, but James Stewart out in front with the whole shot. Probably doesn't know yet where Carmichael is, but figures, hey, everybody's behind me. That's all that counts. Mike Brown's up there on the Rockstar Energy Suzuki. He's uh, had some struggles in the lights class, moved it up to the uh, motocross class, and he's got a good start going in this moto anyway. James Stewart with the best start of inside the top ten. Wasn't even uh, supposed to be in the motocross class this summer, but uh, made the move up, and it's paying off for him. Kevin Windham leaping by the camera and got past Mike Brown. Here comes Carmichael next. Carmichael working on the number three, Suzuki with his number four. Windham just about parking it in that very slow turn. Here comes Carmichael. Will he make a move on Brown this time around, setting up those turns two or three corners in advance? Adub's got his hunting gear on again. Up here in the Northwest, that's fitting. Probably got some people cheering for him just because of his bright orange gear. Hunting for a podium finish, perhaps. Carmichael in fourth is going to take that away. Travis Preston and Timmy Ferry making an appearance there. As we get, here's James Stewart, our leader. That's how far behind Chad Reed is. And three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand. Five or maybe six seconds by my highly scientific measuring method is Ricky Carmichael. We'll be right back. Found Energy Washougal National shaping up to be a good one as Carmichael is up behind Chad Reed just like that. And when Carmichael sets his sight on somebody, it's usually a successful hunt. We talked a little bit about Ricky always staying outside or inside of a guy's line. Another reason for that is staying out of that roost. Um, not only does it dirty your goggles and, and hurt, but it breaks your focus, breaks your concentration. When you're getting hit with that dirt, you're not focusing on where you're going and what your, uh, what your next move is, what line you're hitting. To a lesser degree on a muddier track, it would also clog up the cooling system, perhaps get stuck in the wheel and uh, slow you down physically as well. So Carmichael now stalking Chad Reed, trying to find a place to get around him. He goes way outside on this one, setting something up for the right-hander. He gets in, in tight and makes the pass for now anyway. Side-by-side side up the hill, Ricky Carmichael gets the job done. There's a pretty big gap to James. I mean, I, I don't know that he can close that kind of distance. But we'll see. Well, he had a pretty big gap behind Chad Reed when we went to commercial break, and he's closed that one up right away. Reed's still showing some signs of fight here as he crosses back to the inside, gets close, comes up into the – oh, he could have put a wheel on him but didn't. On his way, Kevin Windham, not much he can do about it. James Stewart is our leader here at Washougal, moto number two. He finished runner-up to Carmichael in the first one, but he's out in front, and Ricky having some difficulty. Oh, he's on uh, him. Yeah, closing the gap, but he's gotten it done now. So that speed that Carmichael possesses when he needs it is very much in evidence once again. I didn't think he'd be able to close that much time on James, but uh, he found some speed somewhere. Well, when you've got that carrot sticking out there in front of you, you're going to whip yourself into shape here. As Carmichael has closed the gap on to James Stewart here. We've got a few laps to go. Right now, we'll take a quick break and come back to the action here at Washougal. By Dentine Ice. Go bold. Carmichael's going to have to go bold here as the closing laps are upon us. And James Stewart is just in front of him. Carmichael pushing hard. Stewart with the speed. And the battle resumes. This is for the overall. Both of these guys uh, know that. James certainly knows that he caught it, made up all that distance on him, but he doesn't want to let this go either. Oh, and right in front of the mechanic signal area, Ricky Carmichael shows Goose that he can get it done as he goes past James Stewart now. Indeed, 1-1 one, one for Carmichael will give him the overall, but a 2-1 a for James Stewart would give the number seven rider that overall win. Carmichael in front right now with Stewart trying to figure out a way to get back around him. These two had such a good battle in moto number one. Certainly Stewart will have learned something. Carmichael getting a little bit better breaks in traffic. Let's see if it happens again. And that's partly why Carmichael must have gone by. James Stewart pushing him hard once again. Well, Ricky looks like he's swapping all over the place here. I don't know if it's getting slippery out there, if he's just pushing that hard, but been going sideways more than he's been going straight this last lap. Sideways again. 
On the uphill section here, James Stewart right behind him trying to capitalize. They go side by side over the jump. The next turn's a left-hander. Stewart can't make it work. That was the Bubba scrub right there, in case you were wondering. James didn't even get any air off that jump, and he hit it faster than Ricky did. Somehow Carmichael managed to stay in front of him. Stewart's going to have to work him again, find a turn, plan a couple of spots, a couple of turns ahead of that, see if he can make a move. Yeah, he just lost uh, some time in those turns here through the woods riding section, as Chad Reed called it. So Carmichael with maybe a second advantage right now, and the distance between them is obvious to all of the some 27,000 fans who have packed the parking lot and the track here at Washougal. Two laps to go. James is still close enough to make a pass again, so. Another look at this sequence just a little bit earlier. Ricky just squared it up and went aside of him, blocked his line. Carmichael and then Stewart in that order. Inside two laps remaining here at Washougal. Track conditions have somewhat stabilized now, and we expect it'll hold up about the way it is for these final couple of circuits. Roger DeCoster there signaling to Carmichael. I think he was signaling to that lap rider to get the heck out of the way. Well, whatever <laughs> happened, it worked. Oh! oh! An epic get off by Ricky Carmichael, who's on his feet before the bike stops moving. And now the question is no, it is not still running. He did, the bike did stall, but he gets it running pretty quickly. Sometimes Ricky Carmichael has the luck of the Irish, doesn't he? Look at this. Oh, that looked like freestyle. He's like a yard dart. That was the flying, no-handed Superman get off, dismount. They'll come up with a name for that one. It is epic. You see his front wheel just, it pushed on that hard, slick dirt, and he had the bar turned, and when he grabbed that sticky dirt, when he hit that again, it just locked the bars up and spit them over the front. And what a tough piece of leather is Ricky Carmichael. Lance hits the ground, flat on his belly from 10 feet in the air, and he's up and running before the bike even quits moving. So the final lap now for James Stewart and the checkered flag. He gets handed a certain amount of good fortune, but a lot of us, including me, are going to say that James Stewart had him covered here in Moto2. Well, one of the most bizarre get-offs we've seen in a while. Ricky, what exactly went on out there? You know what, uh, I was ready, I had two more laps to go, just got into the lead and uh, just was leaning over the front, you know, just charging and uh, what happened was I just, uh, my front end was, you know, just sliding, sliding and it caught and flipped me over. I'm lucky I'm not hurt, but uh, man, just disappointed, that was a dumb mistake and I only had a lap and a half and I just broke in James and uh, all I had to do was bring it home, but I failed. What is it about this track? There's something about it that seems to be challenging for you. Damn, I don't know, man. I'm always screwing something up here. It's always been tough for me, and uh, you know what? Hey, life goes on, and uh, it'd be good. Just keep me motivated on the weekend off. Great job. <laughs> Thanks. The only guy to take the overall win away from Ricky Carmichael since 2003, and he's done it not only once but twice already this season. James, you poured on the juice when it count. Yeah, you know, I, I just... Got a good pace going, and uh, you know I saw those guys catching me. And the way this track is, you know, it's kind of hard to, you know, make up time and, and push. You know, so uh, you know he started making, and he passed me, and um, I passed him back, and uh, I could have hit him, but I was like, man, we're going too fast right here. And he got by me, and I saw his line, so it was good. These, the crowd was out there great, and uh, I just got to give it up to my team. Like I said in the first moto, these guys went back and, and bust their behind, and uh, it, it feels good to get a win before the break, and uh, now. It's, really motivation to go back and work a lot harder. With their functions, including the, the 250F intro they had this weekend, that they expect him to be the number one guy for Suzuki, and they expect him to be up there uh, a potential race winner. So a lot of pressure on Ivan's shoulders for next year. Glenn Helen National underway. James Stewart with a late charge into turn number one. Does he come out with the whole shot? Apparently so. James Stewart on the number seven Kawasaki gets out in front. And he's followed immediately by the number four, Ricky Carmichael. So the two principal contenders in motocross racing today are out front together. And hopefully we can get a good battle going here at the last, last round of the year. We had some great races earlier on in the season. James, uh, of course, having a couple bad crashes that slowed his uh, early season charge. But it seems like he's a more patient, wiser rider at this point in the year than he was 
the start of the season. Well, it's going to take something like that to uh, pull that razor edge off of how he was riding earlier. There's always that edge of disaster, too, and the disaster get, did come up and bite him a time or two. So James Stewart out in front. Let's see if he really will be the heir apparent to the Ricky Carmichael crown, the future star, the future champion of Supercross and motocross. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Michael Byrne running in third spot right now. Good run for the number 26 Kawasaki. Burns, uh, he's got something to prove. He doesn't have a job lined up as of yet for next year. And a good good finish, strong finish here today will definitely keep his name in the back of team mechanics and, or team managers' minds when they're looking to sign a rider here in the next several weeks. Stewart and Carmichael both kind of picking their way tenderly through this first lap. And even at that, they've pulled away from the rest of the field. Burn a distant third position right now, probably eight or nine seconds behind Carmichael, who's maybe three or four seconds behind James Stewart. And you see that triple step up, step up again. This is into the new section of the track. This is all new from years past. This is a, a, a little racetrack that they have local races on in the weekends, and they've added it into the national course this, this year. And some of the riders like it. You can see there's quite a few rocks in it over here. Um, a lot of the teams are running moose tubes instead of actual tubes in their tires to prevent flats. So. Uh, it's sort of mixed reviews, but I think for the most part people like it. And, and they do like the fact that it makes the lap times longer. They're upwards, uh, you know, almost three minutes long. It makes the motos go by a lot quicker when your lap times are longer like that. Stewart and Carmichael. Carmichael and Stewart, we've talked about the two of them all year long. And right now it is James Bubba Stewart leading Ricky on his Makita Suzuki number four. And uh, there's a section of the racetrack there that uh, has gotten developed a lot of ruts here over the course of practice. Lights, and now this first motocross moto here. Yeah, they call that Flounder Freeway there. It's always, uh, they overwater it intentionally and uh, try to make it kind of a ruddy mess, and it works every year. That's exactly what it is. Stewart going for a tear off there as he one hands it over some of the smaller jumps. Ricky Carmichael's right there behind him. No serious competitive move out of Carmichael. Burns somewhat a more distant uh, in the third position there. We just got a glimpse of his Kawasaki number 26. And you can see they went through a tight section there just before and after the finish line. But the rest of this track, as you see him just pinned there at fourth. Oh, Ricky squirrels it a little bit. But uh, this track is fast. These guys are, are wide open uh, a majority of this track. In fact, a lot of the teams are having to run larger gas tanks, the big aluminum tanks that hold a little bit more fuel because these guys are just, they're running them dry. Carmichael up around the outside. Yeah, you can see that right wrist cocked full wide open on the throttle most of the way around the Glen Helen Raceway here for our giant RV National. And Carmichael and Stewart, again, neither one looking very aggressive at this point in their uh, body language or in their style. Carmichael biding his time behind Stewart. Stewart just putting a good lap together uh, and hitting his marks but the two of these guys are so much better than everybody else. No one else is even in the picture. Well, it's been that way all year. You know, part of the reason they might be taking it a little bit easy, you see coming down that hill, it's pretty muddy. They put down a lot of water in between motos here and um, to keep the dust down for fans. Uh, but what it does is make it very slippery the first few laps for these guys. This uh, California soil doesn't really absorb the, absorb the moisture as well as a softer, loamier, sandier soil like we would have back east. So. It gets very slick when you put water down it. And uh, as you can see, these guys are kind of gingerly coming down those hills. They're not really charging yet. Riding the front wheel down the hill and the back wheel up. We'll be back in just a moment. Craft and scooters. Glen Helen Raceway and a young fan enjoying James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael battling at the front of the field. Well, there hasn't been much of a battle yet. It's more or less follow the leader. Stewart is the leader, and Carmichael's content to follow him around for the time being, at least. And he has been patient. Normally you see him getting all over James immediately and trying to make a, a pass by, but so far he's just been content to sit back there just outside of the roost and um, just kind of watch his lines and follow him around. Carmichael on the number four Makita Suzuki, James Stewart using the number seven this season on his factory Kawasaki entry. Now Carmichael getting a little bit closer and the crowd starting to whoop it up a bit. Up the hills and down the dales of Glen Helen Raceway in front of a record crowd here, a big crowd at least. Don't know about a record, but because the course is so much bigger, it's hard to tell. They're all spread out around the hills here. There goes Ricky. Yeah, Whoa. Ricky goes by, swaps ends. Stewart rails around the outside and repays the favor. They're side by side. Listen to the crowd now. Yeah, they're getting the race they came to, to see and paid for. Yeah, this is some racing here. 
Stewart maintains the lead after several exchanges of that position. So a little preview of things to come here as Carmichael starting to show some signs of wanting to fight for the win. You know, James had faster lap times in the second practice. Oh, here comes Ricky again. He goes by and gets the block pass going into a left-hander. That was a big step up. I don't think I've seen anyone do that so far today. Well, Carmichael has a way of pulling moves out of his bag of tricks that no one else has ever seen. And now he opens a little bit of a gap on Stewart as they park it here in a tight right-hander. How those two guys get in that one little spot there? <laughs> There's two. Two fellas standing in one little spot on the racetrack, whipping a towel around. That's pretty interesting. Carmichael with the lead over Stewart. Let's see if James has got something to answer back with here. Well, most of the season uh, here, the last half of it anyway, hasn't there hasn't been an answer when Ricky does that. He goes by and puts a gap on you, and that's the last you see of him. Well, an old friend of mine used to call it the Slip Gatiki, which was an acronym for so long it's been good to know you. S-L-I-B-T-K-Y. Ricky's just done it to James again here. Let's see if it's for good. Still early in the moto, and James is hanging close. Take another look at this exchange. These two guys went after each other pretty hard. And I don't know if James has been doing this and just missed it this time, but you can see Ricky having to seat bounce that thing, really compress the suspension to get the lift to get up that far. He said, I haven't seen anybody do that yet, so that was uh, the first time I've seen it. Nice move by the man who's the best in the business, Ricky Carmichael, still leading James Stewart. Stewart running in second position. And lots of fans and the mechanics at trackside are having uh, a very entertaining race going on here. I don't know if the track's just starting to come in or Ricky just feels like it's time, but he definitely looks like he's riding more aggressive. He's picked up the pace. Trying to cut the lap times down. A little bit of dust getting kicked up there on a spot where the water is uh, run out. Yellow flags being waved on the course here. Not sure exactly what that's all about. James Stewart running hard. Where is Ricky Carmichael? No Carmichael. Oh. Stewart is the leader. The yellow flags were because Carmichael has gone down. He's back up again. Oh, but that, no, he's hurting. That left shoulder is hurting. He can't, he's not going to hold on to the handlebars. He's one-handing it around the track. And not because he's winning. Now, look at this. How tough is it to climb this hill with one arm? Well, you don't do it unless you have to. You can see him shaking that thing off, trying to, he must have augered in there with his shoulder. But, yeah, he can't even keep it up on the bars. He's definitely got a problem with it. Oh, he, yeah, this is not good. Ricky Carmichael, of course, with the motocross donations uh, coming up. And a first DNF. Is it possible that Ricky Carmichael will not finish a race for the first time? Wow. Everybody's looking. Everybody's watching to see. There's looking. There's Kevin Windham. They're not watching K-Dub. They're watching for the number four. You can see the asterisk guys were standing there on the side of the track kind of with their arms up like, you know, you need to pull off. What do you got? What's going on? And yeah, Ricky's heading in. He's done. Yep. He's can't got our heels to touch if we're sitting in a chair in the living room. So doing it over the handlebars of a motorcycle is completely out of the question. But James Stewart, you saw the graphic there a moment ago. His last moto win was at Washougal in the second moto. So he is a pretty happy guy right now, celebrating uh, quite vigorously as he takes the checkered flag and the victory for moto number one here at the giant RV Glen Helen National in San Bernardino. And he got it back again. It's a bummer, you know, I felt really good today. I just had a few mistakes in the beginning and I uh, felt better once he got by me and saw his line. So um, we'll just go back and get ready for the second moto and uh, see what happens. Now, I know that you wish Ricky absolutely no harm whatsoever, but in a sense, is there, are you kind of glad finally it was his turn? No, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't ever wish anything bad on people. You know, I, I love Ricky. You know, we've been great, you know, team, not teammates, but, you know, teammates basically racing on the track. And uh, I hope he's all right. We got to go over there and show the world that um, we can do it over there. So he'll be back. Congratulations on a sweet success. Thank you.